Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today we have mandibular first molar from dental anatomy. Maxillary uh, teeth are all maxillary third molar, which is not very important. Maxillary central, lateral, canine, maxillary first and second premolar, maxillary first and second molar. Mandibular teeth also we finished till canine, premolars and molars are left. So I'll be doing uh, mandibular first molar, then second molar, then I'll be going to mandibular premolars. So mandibular first molar, which is a very big tooth and the largest tooth in the mandibular arch. So while coming to the tooth numbering system, we have universal system, Zygmo de Palmer system and FTA system. Universal system is just the numbering. It starts from 1 here and 32 here. So since it's a mandibular premolar, we have 17 here, so this is third molar, second molar and 19 will be the first lower uh, molar on the third quadrant. Uh, whereas the fourth quadrant, this will be 30 because 32 is the last tooth. So this will be the third molar, 31 will be the second molar and 30 is the lower first molar on the right side. Okay, so this should be the patient phase. Uh, Zygmunt de Palmer system is like this, third and fourth quadrant. And FTA system, we have 4, 6 and 3, 6. So that was about the tooth numbering system. Now let's see what are the chronological details. Chronology, we have first evidence of calcification. at birth then the crown completed by two to half two and a half to three years and eruption by six to seven years then the root completion by nine to ten years so you can see that always there is a gap between uh, the crown completion eruption and root completion so after eruption still root grows and it is finished by 9 to 10 years after crown completion it takes another three years to eruption so that was about the chronology whereas the dimension uh, we have uh, the length is around 15.8 millimeter this is length uh, then the length of crown is around 6 mm. This is overall. This is crown length. Then the length of root is uh, around 9.8 mm. And mesiodistal dimension of crown is around 7.7. .7. And it is at cervix will be lesser. So that is around 6.5 mm. Then the labiolingual diameter is 7 and 5.3 at the cervix. So this was about the uh, dimensions and this is chronology. Now we'll start our each surfaces. So mandibular first molar, as you see the picture here, it has got five cusps, but that is two buccal, two lingual and one distal. Okay, so the buccal surface is more bulky uh, and it is more towards uh, lingually inclined with two developmental grooves. The crown is wider mesiodistally than buccolingually and occlusal outline is rectangular in shape and there is two well developed roots one mesial and one distal compared to the uh, maxillary molars which is wider buccolingually than mesiodistally but this is opposite it is wider mesiodistally than buccolingually in maxillary molars we have a palatal root and a buccal root this is opposite one mesial and one distal so the buccal aspect the mesial contact area is at the junction of the occlusal and middle thirds and the distal contact area is a little lower than the mesial contact area 
and the cervical line is regular which curves apically and there are two developmental groups between the cusp acting as lines of division between the buccal cusp you can see the mesiobuccal uh, developmental groove is shorter than the distobuccal developmental groove so you can see two grooves which divides the buccal side into three cusps that is the mesiobuccal cusp distobuccal cusp and the distal cusp and this mesiobuccal groove is shorter than the distobuccal groove that is a developmental groove and the mesiobuccal distobuccal and distal cusp are very visible and the mesiolingual and distolingual cusp tips are seen okay so the cusp tips of the lingual side that is the mesiolingual and distolingual cusp tips are seen from the buccal aspect from the buccal aspect we have three cusp among the mesiobuccal cusp is slightly wider than the distobuccal cusp so this mesiobuccal and distobuccal cusp making 80% of the total width the remaining 20% will be the distal cusp and this buccal cusp are flat occlusally but the distal cusp is more rounded okay so the buccal cusp that is the mesiobuccal and distal cusps are flat occlusally whereas the distal cusp is more like rounded and the point of bifurcation of the two roots about 3 mm below the cervical line so as you see the picture here the bifurcation point is uh, around 3 mm below the cervical line whereas the lingual aspect uh, three cusp uh, can be seen that is the mesiolingual distolingual and the lingual portion of the distal cusp and the mesiolingual cusp is the widest mesio distally and has the highest cusp tip and the distal cusp is the lowest one okay the highest cusp tip is of mesio lingual cusp the two lingual cusps are pointed and form obtuse angle at their cusp tip you can see the obtuse angle so this is the obtuse angle you can see here and the lingual developmental groove extends downward for about one third of the crown length and acts as a line of division between two lingual cusps you can see the lingual uh, developmental groove which extends from the crown and around one third of the length and it divides the two lingual cusps that is the mesiolingual and distolingual cusp now we have the mesial aspect on mesial aspect uh, the shape is uh, almost rhomboidal okay the shape is rhomboidal uh, with a lingual tilt of the buccal outline so you can see a slight lingual tilt of the buccal outline so this is a buccal outline you can see a slight tilt so this buccal outline of the crown is convex at the junction of the cervical and middle third that is the buccal cervical ridge then the outline straightens to form the buccal cusp tip okay so you can see here the buccal outline of the crown is convex at the junction of the cervical and middle third the cervical and middle third it is convex then the outline straightens to the buccal cusp tip Like, whereas the lingual outline is less convex compared to the, it's not much convex. It's less convex with the crest of curvature at the center of the middle third. So you can see the the cervical line is more of irregular and higher lingually than buccally. whereas uh, the buccal cusp is flat and the lingual cusp is sharp okay so the buccal this cusp is flat and the lingual cusp is sharp with greater cusp height and the mesial marginal ridge is located 1 mm below the level of cusp tip still aspect because the crown is shorter distally than mesially most of the buccal lingual and occlusal surfaces can be seen from the distal aspect 
as you see from the picture here you can see the mesial side the occlusal side because the distal side of the crown is shorter so most of the teeth uh, this will be the same where the distal crown is shorter and the distal cusp uh, which is located buccal to the uh, long axis of the tooth so you can see the distal cusp which is present uh, buccal to the long axis of the tooth and the distal marginal ridge is shorter and curves cervically to form an obtuse angle so you can see here it curves and forms an obtuse angle and uh, the cervical line is more of irregular and the distal root is narrower than the mesial root uh, well coming to the occlusal surface the crown is more of a rectangular in shape it is uh, larger in mesiodistal around 1 mm uh, compared to the buccolingual whereas the buccolingual measurement of the crown is greater on the mesial side than the distal side and the mesiodistal measurement is greater on the buccal than lingual so i repeat buccolingual measurement okay is greater on the mesial side okay the mesiodistal measurement is greater on buccal side than the lingual okay and there are five cusp uh, that is the mesiobuccal which is the largest mesiobuccal is the largest uh, then the mesiolingual uh, then comes the distolingual then con comes the distobuccal and finally the distal okay so this order is very important mesiobuccal mesiolingual distolingual distobuccal and distal the distal contact area is on the distal cusp okay you can see the distal contact area is on the distal cusp and there are four developmental groups uh, there is one central developmental group which runs in the central part then the mesio buccal developmental group divides the mesio buccal and distal buccal cusp then the distal buccal developmental group which divides the distal buccal and distal cusp then the lingual developmental group it divides the mesio lingual and distal lingual cusp and there are three fossas central fossa which is uh, more like a circle which is bounded by distal slope of mesiobuccal cusp and both mesial and distal slopes of distobuccal cusp mesial slope of distal cusp and the distal slope of mesiolingual cusp and lastly the mesial slope of distolingual cusp it forms the central fossa okay then the mesial triangular fossa it is distal to the mesial marginal ridge distal triangular fossa it is mesial to the distal marginal ridge and there are three pits uh, the dots you can see there is a central pit in the center of the central fossa mesial pit it is in the mesial triangular fossa and the distal pit it is in the distal triangular fossa so that was all about uh, mandibular first molar uh, the basic uh, difference between the maxillary molar and mandibular molar the mesiodistal dimension is larger in mandibular teeth compared to the maxillary teeth and the roots mesial and distal whereas the maxilla it is more like buccal and lingual and it is having well developed five cusps in the mandibular first molar largest is the mesiobuccal and the smallest is the distal and occlusal anatomy it has got central fossa and the boundaries are little confusing but if you know the occlusal anatomy well all the cusp it's very easy central fossa and the mesial and distal triangular fossa then pits are there central pit distal pit and mesial pit so you need to draw a picture for every uh, dental anatomy tooth morphology question and write about each aspect in the beginning you need to write about the chronology and dimension and the tooth numbering system then you can start the surface one by one buccal lingual mesial distal and occlusal with proper diagram so i'll be coming with the maxillary uh, sorry the mandibular second molar in my next video thank you